Good morning, Magandang Umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. I'm sitting here l lamenting over what's going on over here. Two times I went down to Vulcan and asked them to mix me up a batch of, of paint that will match the, the post, the deck railing post over here, which is this right here. <laughs> and uh, and this, this is the first what they gave me. And this is the second that they gave me right here. It's not, neither, neither are even close. Ugh, I don't know, I, I don't know what to do. Um, it's, it's gonna have to be another trip. We can't use that. There is no way that that's gonna work for the color that I'm looking for. Uh, so anyway, uh, back to the drawing board on that one. Well anyway, today is uh, build day 283. It's build day 283 here on a construction schedule out at Villa Feliz. Uh, today some exciting things I think are going to happen uh, What we are going to do is uh, we're, we're doing the soffit work the light work uh, today, but the exciting part is Generator, I think we're in the final stages of getting the generator hooked up and, and uh, Connected so uh, I think we're going to be doing a test of that as well as you see these lights right here this light Here and this light right here Well yesterday my my electrician he installed it while I wasn't around he did it all the hookup uh, but the switch that he hooked it up to is for all these lights on the inside. You see all the... So you have to turn on to get these two, two lights that I wanted to be on an independent switch. To get these two lights, to cut, you have to cut on all the lights on the inside. But anyway, that's not the way I want it to work. I want them to be, to be independent because sometimes I just want some light out here to go along with these two lights out here. And he said no problem. He's going to do a, a double switch uh, where the... Uh, connection is in the wall the light switch is there and he, and every time I ask him I said can you do this and it's always no problem uh, very good electrician so anyway we will get that taken care of also today we'll make that correction uh, finishing work still going on on the back of the house uh, where we were yesterday and it rained pretty much all night long you can see the ground is not, but we needed rain really bad believe it or not even in the Philippines, there's like drought times and we haven't had really any rain in quite some time. Uh, so they're working out here today and I'm glad it's not raining right now because then we wouldn't be able to continue on the outside work, which is what we need to do. Well, that is what is going on early this morning and we'll see what happens as the day progress. So let's get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. <laughs> break time right now it is right at 10 o'clock and we had some neighbors that stopped by and we talked with them for over an hour outside while work was going on inside the background and so let's go, go ahead and take a look at what we are up to right now we'll do a little walk around the house <clears throat> remember back here my electrician is still working on the wiring for the generator and uh, this is a good sign because we're going from the main breaker. Remember, everything has to come into the main breaker. Uh, this is our air breaker into the house, is what they call it. And it goes from the main breaker. Uh, we'll go into the, the automatic transfer switch. Uh, inside the automatic transfer switch, you see it says house net, says generator and output. This is where it does its, its uh, selection uh, based on logic. If we have power coming in from the house, from the uh, utility company, from Modelec, it will send power from that to the circuit breaker. If for some reason we lose, we have a brownout, and then it will, it will do an automatic transfer over to the generator. Send a signal back to the generator, tell the generator to turn on, uh, get up to operating voltage, and then switch over from the output of the generator 
to this to our circuit breaker panel instead of the uh, the main coming in. And it, it there will be a gap inside there, so it's not on the same line. So when the generator comes on, it, it's like an A B switch. Uh, we won't be sending any electricity back into the grid. And that would be a safety factor. Uh, so anyway, that's where we are here. Uh, my carpenter is working on two things right now. One, they're working on the finish for the doors that are going to the pump room and uh, they will be working on the door going to the stairs pretty soon. And he's also doing the correction. Remember, our doors uh, were installed, were finished. And uh, after that, we had some swelling from the humidity and the swelling causes, uh, remember wood is organic and it grows, it expands and it contracts depend on humidity and heat and coolness and things like that. Uh, so all of our doors, uh, they, 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 they stick when they close. I'm sure people have seen that in the past. Uh, so they've pulled it off here. They did the appropriate shimming and doing refinishing on here and these will be remounted back on there. We're on the stairways here. Our uh, tile guy, Ading, he is working on the rise. And the rise is, remember, is a single rise that we cut down the center and we put, are putting this uh, glass mosaic for a little bit of a visual enhancement as you're walking up the steps. So every step is going to have, in the center, is going to have this three-quarter inch, approximately three-quarter inch uh, glass mosaic inside there. So that should be uh, a very nice detail walking up to the uh, to the first floor. So anyway, up here on the um, second floor, about this near the second floor, halfway up uh, the house, up here we are going to put the pin lights, the two pin lights, one over here, one over here. Uh, my electrician over here, he's got his hands full today. He's got a lot, a lot going on. And at uh, noon, he just informed me that we're going to do the uh, the test of the generator. That's when uh, the crew here are done. They don't need power right away. And uh, we will uh, turn a lot of things off inside the house and then slowly uh, crank up the generator and apply some load to it. And we'll see how that works. Well, it is amazing right after we get a rain. Like I said, we haven't had a rain in quite a long time. Right after we get a rain, all these little weeds start popping up from everywhere. I'm in the process of now, uh, since this area is going to be uh, regraded and we're going to put some grass back here. Uh, I like to stay ahead of some of the weeds back here. So what I do every now and then I get back here and I, I start digging up. Now, I've already done a bunch this morning, but I'll go inside and I'll break up some of the soil uh, right around where the weeds are and, and then I'll collect all the weeds. Uh, what you need to do, when you pull weeds, and I'm sure folks who have done this before, when you're pulling weeds, and the main reason that they come back, a lot of people just pull the top off, and the roots are still inside the ground. Well, the roots are just going to regenerate new weeds again. So you have to do your best to get the nodes underneath. So if you go down and you, you break up the soil, then you get down way deep down inside and get all of these, uh, most of the time that will eliminate the weed coming back again. Uh, it's, it's a struggle. You can, anybody who works in the yard knows weeding is probably one of the, mo one of the most... Uh, uh, the, the toughest challenge is trying to keep a yard nice. Uh, in the U.S., they're really big with doing things like they have like weed and feed and all these different things that will kill the weeds but also keep your grass nice and healthy. And now there's fertilizers that are added to that. And a lot of the way weed and feed works is you're not killing, immediately killing the weed. What you're doing is you're over fertilizing it and you cause it to burn itself out, growing so fast at a rapid pace. Uh, there is not, I haven't seen in the, in the stores around here, in the, the feed shops or in places like the, uh, the hardware stores, I haven't seen an abundance of chemicals. They don't use a lot of chemicals over here. A lot of this is natural. Uh, so it is a challenge, but we, we will uh, succeed. I guarantee you we will succeed uh, ending up with a nice uh, clean yard here. But it will not be without any type of a strategy for removing weeds.
Well, anyway, as you can see, the crew are on their lunch break, and we're about to do our lunch as well. Uh, I think I have some leftover adobo and some rice, so, and we're gonna and, enjoy and soup and some soup. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're gonna enjoy a little bit of lunch here. I have a little bit of concerns about the generator. I started thinking about generator, and I think we're gonna test it here in just a little bit. Uh, the control wires, the ones that we extended. Uh, we extended them over uh, CAT6 cable. We're using that as a control. And normally if it's just a sensor and it's like very small amount of amperage in there, milliamps, uh, there's usually no problem using that, that kind of a uh, configuration. Uh, but I got to looking at the schematic and the schematic is telling me we have 12 volts and it acts like a relay inside of a car. But the control wire that came with it, it's not a real thick wire, but it's thicker than a Cat6 wire. A Cat6 wire is very thin. Uh, I have a concern that it might fuse the wire, basically melt the, the thinner wire, but it's solid strand. Generally speaking, a solid copper wire is better than the multi-strand cable. And it depends on the thicknesses, how many strands that you have uh, and the thickness of the, the copper cable itself. Normally inside a car circuit, when you turn your ignition switch, you have 12 volts riding on there and the, the amperage is, is, is high inside there. That's why they use a little bit thicker wire inside there. So I don't know if the higher amperage runs over the control cable or if it's only in the re relay between the starter relay and the 12 volt battery itself. So uh, this is going to be a test for us and we'll do it several times uh, and uh, basically letting it run so many seconds to make sure. Mm, we might test it first to see how it goes. Uh, if it fuses, uh, it's going to be bad because if it fuses inside the cable itself, it means we're going to have to re-pull that entire cable. Oops. Well, we have everything hooked up. We've got the, the control cable from the generator. Automatic transfer switch, and we just turned on the main, and the main shows you that on the automatic transfer switch, we're on the house net right now, which is inside of here, and we set it to auto mode. You have manual or auto. Uh, you can control it yourself if you don't want it to come on automatically, or you can do auto, which we're set up in auto now. So what we're going to do, the, the 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 real test is to see if it works. And the way you, you test it is you sever yourself from your utility in it, just like a brownout. What is supposed to happen is in two seconds, it is supposed to start up the generator. After two seconds, uh, it takes approximately, I think around six seconds to transfer the load properly over to the house and the house will be back online again. So let's test it out and see if it works. So I'm gonna get my electrician, Noel, here. He's gonna turn off the power. He's gonna hit the breaker there. We're going to watch this and we're going to go over to the generator and see if the generator starts up automatically. Right now we have a, we're, we're doing a minor, this is the first test. The first test is with a small load and it's for, the small load is only these lights we have here inside the house in, in, in the garage. And then what we'll do is we'll put a little bit more of a load on here to see, uh, to kind of test it to see because there's an automatic feature inside. If you have too much, it will reset, it will put it into error mode and then you won't have power. First, first test. Yeah. Breaker. Second test. Yep. Yes. Our house net, we do not have bottle electricity anymore. The generator's two seconds started up. And we are on house power right now. You see, we are on generator power. So, it works. Now, the other feature, we have to see if it will shut off. Anyway, let's see what it is. So there was a lot of people that was concerned about the noise. And uh, we'll leave it like this for a second. I'm going to go upstairs. I want to hear what it sounds like upstairs. I'm going to walk upstairs real quick. Remember, we're not, we have lots of uh, windows open inside there, but we're going to pour it. The, we're going to port the uh, exhaust to the outside so we don't have carbon monoxide building. So you can hear the generator a little bit, and that's without any soundproofing. But it's not bad considering that uh, 
We are on generator power and with the generator inside the generator room. So not bad. Hey, dude, the generator's running. The house is on uh, generator power. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, uh, let's go and see if it will turn off automatically. So we're gonna we're gonna apply the utility company power back to our uh, our grid here. And let's see if it turns off the generator. Generator off, no interruption. We have no interruption in the surface inside. So when it when it turns off and it goes back to the utility company, you don't even lose. If you have things running, say you've been out for eight hours or twelve hours or two days, when it goes over, if you have anything going on in the background, it's un it's basically uninterrupted power on on uh, startup to the utility company. But startup to the generator. Remember, you have that two second startup and six uh, six seconds of transfer of load over. So that's the first step. The other steps that we're going to have to have is ch putting a load on it, just making sure it can handle the load of the minor items that we need here, the refrigerator, or the refrigerator, the lights and things like that. Tip of the day when it comes to finishing some of your, your woods, like, like your doors or your door jams. Uh, you want to make sure that if you're doing a lighter color like we did upstairs, the, the natural look of the mahogany, you match up your wood filler to the same color as your doors. Uh, when you're doing something really dark and you're going to put stain over the top of it, you can do a natural color. Like this plastic wood, natural shade right here. You see the natural shade is this. Once they do the painting over the top of it or the, they do the stain, it's going to cover up that natural shade. Well, let me show you what will happen if you use this, the natural shade, and you're trying to do the natural color and not put a dark stain over the top of your wood. So, these doors are natural, almost the natural mahogany color. When you use the natural shade and don't use the mahogany wood color, this is what's going to happen. And it's, it's a shame because I, it, it, it's, it's very, uh, very bad. You see where the they did the repairs on each one of these inside where the nail went through. That's what you're gonna see. I gotta talk with my builder about that. It really needs to be dug out, sanded down, and refilled in, and refinished. But you see, every bit is like that. And to me, that's, that's kind of unprofessional. That's not what you wanna see. This is on your front door. It looks like you have a defect on your front door. And that's the way all of our doors in the house that have natural, uh, natural wood and a natural color. See, even right here. So it's, it's all like that, even in, I can go on and on, but you get the point. So what you want to do, you want to match the shade of your wood filler if you're using a lighter shade of stain or no stain at all. Well, something I want to share with you, my, my electrician right now is working on doing some corrections from the installation that was done earlier by the uh, cabinet team, the, the team that we purchased our kitchen cabinets in and our countertop from. And what I noticed that immediately after they left, they did a check real quick of the lighting. And then as soon as they left, this whole section here didn't work. And, uh, and I was wondering why. So we did a little bit more investigation and we saw the connectors that they used inside here. They're modified connectors. I don't know why they modified them. Uh, maybe because of the wrong connectors uh, for the lights that are supposed to go inside here. But this is what they installed. I want you to see this. They cut out on every one of the connectors, they cut out the ground plug inside here. And I'm, not, I'm not sure why it got modified and uh, it just, and it looks all trashed, but that's what they installed. And when they did this, they, re they reduced the integrity of the connector and it just, it just fell right out and you keep trying to put it back in and it won't seat over the pins. I don't think they brought the right connectors that go with the lights that they have here. Uh, this is probably some residual stock that they had and that's what they installed. 
So what we have, we have some residual stock, but it's a higher quality. And our residual stock is from our, uh, let's see, the, the Philips, our lighting system that we have for uh, the embedded lights that we have. And those are these higher quality with the, their two pin anyway, which is we're only using the two pin on there as it is. So, uh, and these are nice and tight and they fit inside there. So what my electrician is doing right now, uh, he is going inside and he is uh, putting new connectors on those. Uh, but what I want to share with you today is we contacted the kitchen cabinet company that we purchased this kitchen from and uh, we paid a premium price for this because we thought we were getting a premium product. And remember, when you look from a distance, it looks okay. But the team left in a rush on Saturday because it was the end of the day and there was a lot of stuff that had to be done. So they rushed the last few hours to try to get everything done uh, to get off for the weekend. And then we didn't do an inspection. Here's a tip of the day also is make sure before you sign anything and you release the, the workers who are doing things, uh, in your house that you do an inspection of each and everything that they did. Uh, I didn't do that. From the background, it looked like they knew what they were doing, so I assumed everything was good. Well, let me show you some of the details of what I found as I was going through here and uh, things that we have to get fixed. And the things like alignment of, of uh, cabinetry and trim. You see this right here, this trim right here. This trim is supposed to be matching right up to the top of this drawer right here. Um, what happened is this is not either not big enough, the trim is not big enough, or they didn't set, they didn't do a for the for the uh, measurement when they did the measurement of the um, the appliance itself, they didn't calculate any gaps or something. But anyway, it's wrong, and either this needs to be fixed or the entire the entire oven needs to be raised so that this can be moved up and go to the top. We have many of the drawers. We didn't do a check of all the drawers. We just did a sample of a few to, to, to check to see if the drawers automatically go back in. And there are many of the drawers here that don't. And think like cabinets, our pantry, this door doesn't close uh, by itself. Everything is supposed to be auto closed. And it goes to this point right here. And it gets stuck, as you saw, in the position that it was at. This door works, it works properly. It goes and it closes all the way. And you'll see it closes with automatic, well, almost. <laughs> but under a little bit more scrutiny, what you'll find is this hinge is at a, like a 20 degree angle inside here instead of a 90 like it was supposed to be set. So they, they rushed and they put this in improperly and I think it's getting hung up on this, uh, on this hinge inside there. I don't know what it is, but it's an improper installation. As well as many of you have observed, they installed uh, to, to do one door upside down from the other. Uh, you can see this and then it goes up and over like this. This is a, uh, one has a big panel, a big panel, small panel, a small panel, big panel. And what they did is they ordered the wrong door. We were supposed to have a left hand and a right hand door. And uh, we got either two left hand and two right hands. There you go on that one. Uh, then many of the doors, they don't, they don't close. Also, let me show you something else. Let me show you the, uh, let me show you some of the gaps here. Uh, th these cabinets are supposed to be to the ceiling cabinets. I, I didn't even catch this. I'm surprised I didn't see this. But the cabinets are and the crown is supposed to go right to the ceiling. And we have a quarter inch gap, a quarter inch to uh, about three sixty inch gap all the way around where they did not place the cabinetry high enough when they did mounted it to the wall and because they installed the crown after they did the cabinets. What they should have done, they should have, uh, first of all, they should have measured properly, but after they put the cabinet in, they should have done a test piece of crown just to make sure that they had the right gap. Well, they started wrong on one end, and instead of correcting it right at the very beginning, they had allowed it to be incorrect all the way through the entire installation. That's wrong. Uh, the, the glass that they put inside here, when you put the glass inside here, the glass is supposed to sit up flush with the trim and, and you're supposed to be able to have enough gap in the back if you want to put your backsplash back behind it so that you could drop your and replace your light bulbs. It's supposed to be very easy to replace your light bulb. What they did is they, they, they did not calculate and they didn't draw properly. They didn't have, it would take two people. Probably one guy was doing it. And, and you can't see here because the, the, uh, the, the glass is down now so that we can do the repair of the lights. But uh, what they should have done is they should have pushed the glass all the way up mark these before they drilled the holes for these little mounting brackets and then we would have had an even gap all along the back 
Well, we don't. It's the, we have the gap in the front by the trim and not in the back, so we can't even put our backsplash up right now because of the improper installation of the, uh, of the, of the glass inside there. So we have to address that as well. Um, the, remember I said doors that do not close? So this one right here, uh, it just it stops right there. It doesn't close. This one works fine, the one on the top, it, but this one doesn't. Maybe it's just a matter of doing a little adjustment, but it should have been done uh, when they were here. Uh, let me show you something else over on this side. When they did the countertop, the countertop is supposed to go all the way to the wall. They left this huge gap over here, and normally they could have adjusted from that end. They could have brought it this way and adjusted here. The gap that we have on that end could have been corrected if they shifted the entire counter over, and we have that much of room over here, which they could have taken it off of here and moved in this direction. And it goes on and on. Let's look underneath the sink. Underneath the sink, when they installed the plumbing inside here, they didn't calculate where the hole goes inside the, the top of the counter. Uh, and anyway, if they had to move the counter to the left, we would have an even worse problem here. But what they did is the plumbing bangs up against their little nice little drawer. That, and we're on an angle right here. You see it's on an angle. This should be straight up underneath the, uh, up underneath the sink and not jammed up against the little waste disposal basket inside here. And uh, it's just a miscalculation of when they decided to cut the hole inside the, uh, the quartz for the stainless steel sink. And uh, let's look at something else. The trim underneath, they, they don't have it. They're supposed to be attached to clamps to each one of the legs. Everything is totally loose around here. And let me show you, and you see this nice little trim on the side? Well, they didn't, they, they didn't include all the trim. Uh, they, they left without the piece of trim over on this side by the china. And it's just sitting here loose, just like this. It's just kind of hang, hanging loose on the side. And, and there, there was some damage. They did some damage when they came inside. They did some damage to the wall when they were putting the quartz countertop in. We have some cabinet pieces that have a little bit of damage inside. Uh, let's see. Uh, drill. They drilled some holes in some places. Uh, I can't remember which one it was in. They drew, Oh, here. It drilled holes in places that didn't need to have holes drilled in it. Um, again, uh, in my opinion, it's kind of unprofessional. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to give them the opportunity. Uh, we called two times already. We called the company. Please somebody out, send somebody out to fix all these problems that we have here. And both times uh, we still haven't gotten any response about anybody coming out. So um, we'll see. <laughs> well, it is the end of the workday. Uh, everybody's starting to pack up. It's just, it's like four minutes until five o'clock, but everybody's starting to get into uh, teardown mode, uh, get cleaned up and get ready to leave the site here today. It was a productive day and we will get into that in just a little bit. But before we do, I have a couple of shout outs. And I gotta tell you, you guys, you guys kill me sometimes because you send me these shout out requests and sometimes you don't you don't give me the name. You say it's my wife's got a birthday or my husband's got a birthday. Please send me the name of your husband or wife so I can shout out their name on here. And sometimes what you do, you say it's their birthday and you give me the name, but you don't give me the, the date of the name. So I have to just make an assumption. And case in point is today. Uh, and today we have a birthday shout out for Aaron Taylor, who is turning 49 from Detroit, uh, Michigan. And anyway, his wife was the one who sent in the, the uh, birthday request. And uh, his wife is from, let me get this right, it's from New Baton Compostela Valley Province. And she said, can you send a shout out, a warm shout out to my husband for his birthday today. Anyway, happy birthday, Aaron. Also today, I have one more shout out and the shout out is for a birthday and it's for tomorrow. Today is January 17th, tomorrow is gonna to be January 18th, but it might be January 18th by the time you see this. So hopefully this shout out is on time. And this is from a the username. The username is uh, Interesting Videos. That's the name. <laughs> That's the username, and I, I hope you do have some interesting videos. Anyway, and she is a Filipina nurse in Ireland, and she wants to do a shout out for her son, Jonas, who is turning the big 18 today. So anyway, from your mom and from me, Jonas, happy birthday. Well, as I said, it is the end of the day, and as always, I do a nice wrap up at the end of the day, and that's what we're going to do today. And uh, we're going to start on the back of the house because I'm standing on the back of the house. And today, you see, we are getting more and more finishing. This is starting to look like a house 
uh, the back side of a house, which this is the back side of the house. And uh, a lot of the finishing got done today, and uh, it will probably either tomorrow or Saturday, we will finish everything. We should have this uh, soffit area done with the two lights up in this area, and that portion should be done, and then we can focus on some other things that need to be done around the house. There's more things that need to be done inside, especially uh, for the CRs. I sent my list of tiles that we're using to my builder today. So hopefully he's able to score those real soon, bring those in, and they can start doing the tiles. I would like to get the CR on the first floor done as soon as possible. And then they still have to do some things on the second floor. They have to do with some of the concrete and things like that up there. Uh, but once we get to that, um, I, will, I have the tiles already picked out. I just haven't given him uh, the specifics on that as well. You see, they took off the plastic off of the back of the house, so we can now use the sliding glass door again and get over to where our little sink is. But now we have the sink inside the kitchen, so it's kind of a moot topic right now. Moot topic, you like that one. So anyway, um, we were gonna go around and see what's happening inside the basement area today. Remember today, what was being worked on was a couple of super things and almost a giggly moment. We could, we could pretty much qualify it as a giggly moment, and that's with the generator. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. We're going to walk our way through. Again, more finishing. I saw them working on the, the, the uh, doors to some of the cabinets inside the house. Some more finishing, sanding and doing some of the lacquer coat on the door that takes us up to uh, the kitchen area. Also, some sanding, some more fixing. Uh, they were putting some of the wood filler inside and doing some more sanding on this door, which is going to go to the pump room. But let's go ahead and get to the generator, which to me was the most exciting thing today. And today we have the generator installed, uh, and this is the automatic transfer switch. We did a functional check. The reason that the circuit breaker panel cover is off is because they're going to do the finishing. We're going to get back. This is going to get back to looking like this very soon. We'll do the cover, and it'll look like nothing ever happened back here. Uh, and, of course, the generator is in this room. So tomorrow I have to do a shopping trip. And one of the things I need to do, I need to get a stabilizer, something to put underneath the wheels so the wheels don't move back and forth when the generator is running. And I have to try to source, and it probably isn't going to get done tomorrow, but we have to port this exhaust right here. This cover comes off, and we're going to try to do a small flex hose, and then we're going to try to port the exhaust outside the house. Uh, we need to get that exhaust. We can't have carbon monoxide inside the house and uh, killing us. So that's what I got to say. Right now, the, I have it in manual transfer mode. Uh, you see it's not in the auto designation. And that's in the, uh, I we still have to do some more additional, I gotta do some load testing. And I will do it slowly. Uh, I will add additional things. And that's, I, I think that's probably the normal way to do it. Um, we kinda know what our capacity is here with our lights and our ref and things like that. Uh, but I still want to do a slow test of that as well. Let's um, move up to the uh, first floor. Uh, but you see uh, my my tile guy, uh, he's been working on the top, doing the top section. This is the example of what the stairway is going to look like when it's finished. Well, we have one that's done. And he has several of the top ones. And let's see how far he's gotten up to the top portion. All of these are embedded up to here. And maybe tomorrow he will start on a second floor, uh, second stage uh, from, the, from the platform working up into the kitchen, and he'll get those. It, he, he seems to be doing the top first, the top section of the, of the rise, and then he's doing the bottom section, and then the last thing he's doing is putting in that decorative glass mosaic. On the first floor, what got done today? Finishing. A lot of work got done by uh, one of our finishing crew again working on these columns I saw him and this is like day three on the columns right here uh, adding additional skim coat paint uh, water mixture and doing the sanding and working on this as well uh, in the laundry room additional work got done inside here we are finally going from pink and we are slowly getting to the brown wood color stain so this is what got done inside here you see the backs are done and some underneath and some of the top and they are working on that as well. I don't think anything got done up on the second floor, so we don't even need to go to the second floor. Uh, remember, and on the outside, uh, the soffit and lights were being done. And we're gonna test that tonight from the outside of the house. We're gonna test the new lights. I've been excited, I tell you, I've been really excited about this. Uh, the two places that I can't wait to see the lights get turned on 
which are going to help uh, highlight the accent on the front of the house is this section in the stairwell. You see those two pin lights up there. And the other one that I want to see, uh, that I'm really anxious to see, is the one that's going to sit center on that arch window. You see the orange cable hanging down. But that orange cable is going to go over in between the two vents that they put in today. They'll finish that in the morning. They will put the PVC material, run the orange cable in the center, and then mount the light there. But tonight, we should be able to test out these two lights and see what kind of effect it does on this portion of the front of the house. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Not only did my electrician do an awesome job today on the generator, I asked them to fix that problem, you know, with the lights on the outside, that when you turn all of these lights on inside here, they, they, that was the only way you could turn these two lights on out of here. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't I just, when I just want these two lights on out here, I don't want my whole basement all lit up. And he said, oh, I can take care of that. And he's so good and he's fast. And what he did was he came over and this was a single, this was a single gang uh, switch here before. He made a double gang. So now you'll see when we turn this switch light on by itself, we now have the lights that light up right here. Uh, so I'm anxious to see that tonight because we haven't had those Oh, we did have those on last night, but the only way I could see it was to have all these lights. So I don't really get to see the contrast uh, with these lights off inside of here. So, and one last thing that I failed to mention is my carpenter worked on our doors that were kind of sticky. Uh, we had doors that you couldn't close. Remember I was talking about how they swelled? They were swelling and you couldn't close. So he fixed the door on the bedroom in the basement as well as the door in the generator room. The generator, you could not close it before. And now we are all hooked up uh he also i believe he worked on the ones maybe or maybe not up on the first floor we have the do two doors that go to bedroom number one and bedroom number two and they had the same problem before i have to take a look and see if those were done you know we talked about paint selection i i am i tell you what i think the thing that causes me uh the most sleepless nights well nothing really causes me sleep. i sleep really good here um, but the things that i think about the most am i picking the right paint uh, selection uh, for the house is to match my matching things properly and it's tough I've never really been, been really good with that and I work with Ness a lot on a lot of the paints that we have inside we go back and forth and back and forth uh, but we did make one decision today that we both agreed on and you see the house the color that we have on the house the entire house other than the accents is this color right here we're going to continue it down in the driveway and it's going to basically be like an extension of the house to the driveway area and it kind of is because this is kind of our outdoor living space as well and i don't want to see a transition from this paint to a different color paint right here in this corner so we're just going to extend this all the way around it will match with the one up there i think it will be very nice i think that's the right decision same on this side so the entire inside is going to be that now the 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 big challenge today it has to do with our fence remember we have we started out with the house color the house which is covered up there I didn't like that. That's too much of the house color. Then we went with this color, which is called Money Tree. Uh, then we went with Terracotta over here. And today I grabbed some of the color from the columns right there, the paint from the these columns. And I put this over here. And it's really not a true value because it's over the Terracotta and it's still, it doesn't have enough coats to be pure that color right there. But it's almost like a, like a stone or, oh, I, I forgot what the name of the color was. And, but I looked at that and I said, no, that's still too light and it will show splashes. Then I kept going back and forth, this color, this color, and I like both of the colors. Uh, but right now the jury is saying that the terracotta might be the best color right now because the terracotta goes really good with the color of the roof line. And when you stand inside, a lot of times what you have to do, you ever see people doing a little picture and they put their hands up on both sides? Well, that's what I was doing today. I can't tell you how many times I did that today. And you, you do contrast. You look at contrast between other objects in your line of sight. And I stood up there. Well, I'll bring you up there with me. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So up here today, I was standing here and I was looking at my columns and I was trying to see the, the contrast between like this column and that part of the wall over there. And then the column and this part of the wall. 
and it works pretty good on it works pretty good on both of them but in my mind I think this is a cool contrast right here. I wish I had more of the wall to show you and I, I think the terracotta uh, of course you see we have all the stuff that has these type of colors that are more Tuscan and I think the terracotta might work out then we have to decide what color we're going to do for this uh, the caps on the top and then the accent uh, ledge is going to go across there more decisions but we'll get we'll get to it so far i think all the decisions that we've made have been pretty good decisions and you and, and from the from the uh, comments that we've been getting from the subscribers and the viewers uh, i think most people agree that the paint selection has been uh, a pretty uh, pretty good as far as us making sure we don't have craziness colors or things that are too bland so i think the colors are so far are, are pretty good so anyway that's what happened here today at villa Feliz and uh tomorrow is another day so for tomorrow uh tomorrow is going to be thursday i i have a list a to-do list of things to pick up so there will be a road trip tomorrow uh to pick up some items as well as construction that's going to go on here so nessa and i are going to split tasks as far as uh, our duties she's going to monitor things i'm going to try to pick up some building supplies and so on and so forth at least that's what the plan is who knows what happens tomorrow morning every day you never know so i'm going to close for today and uh, get ready for tomorrow so if you enjoyed today's video please give me a thumbs up please share and if you have not subscribed just click on that little my pi dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen you will be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time i upload a new video so until tomorrow you have a wonderful and blessed day Thank you.